Okay, here's your usual pineapple. So here is where you turn it over, I sliced it over, and this is the core right here. Now there's a compound that's called bromelain, and it's all in the whole pineapple plant, but it's, mo it's very concentrated in the core here. And I always remember when you go to the store, they usually core the pineapple to take that part out. So what I did is the other half, I cut it up, and there's the actual core right there. So instead of throwing this away, it's a little bit harder than the rest of the flesh. But chew on it. This is where the highest concentration of this bromelain is. see the core right in there. The natural occurring bromelain is a protein enzyme located in the stem, brown peel, flesh, and the core of the pineapple. There have been numerous university and government studies regarding the health benefits and the quantity needed of bromelain to reduce pain and inflammation. According to one study at the Louisiana State University, when the bromelain content in the pineapple core was measured, researchers found that the core had an even higher level of bromelain than the fruit peel. 100 grams of fresh pineapple provides 86 calories. Fresh pineapple is considered a high fiber fruit. Pineapple is rich in vitamin C also, which supports immunity. Additionally, pineapple is an excellent source of manganese, which helps with proper bone formation, and copper. The pineapple core is as nutritious as the pineapple flesh, providing numerous essential nutrients. This is the part that I found interesting. Bromelain works on a variety of fronts to encourage healing and discourage illness. It has antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and antibacterial properties. It is said to prevent unhealthy blood clots and improve digestion. A 2007 study found bromelain even more better than 5 fluoro a chemotherapy drug, at treating tumors. That's right, scientists found that the anti-tumor effects of bromelain were superior to the effects of the chemotherapy drug 5 fluoro since 2007. Research published in the journal Planta Medica found that bromelain was superior to the chemotherapy drug 5 fluororelacil in treating cancer in animal study. It, this anti-tumoral effect was superior to that of 5-FL, which is the fluororelacil, whose survival index was approximately 263% relative to the untreated control. So there is a handful of compounds that have been discovered which exhibit the effect of selective cytotoxicity, which means that they are able to kill cancer cells while leaving healthy cells and tissue unharmed. This type of cancer treatment is intelligent, which is targeted and will not result in the death of the patient from collateral damage in what is increasingly a failed war not against the cancer being treated but the patient's irreversible devastated body. So in other words, instead of getting the uh, chemotherapy, the drug in this bromelain is actually just as or even more effective than the chemotherapy effect or the, th the, the chemotherapy treatment. So I guess instead of throwing the core away, eat it, chew on it, suck on it, and get that bromelain out of there. Get it in your body. It's supposed to be good for you. 5-fluororacil has been used as a cancer treatment method for about 40 years. It's highly toxic and its effectiveness is questionable at best, but like many cancer treatment methods, it's used regardless. The problem is, with that and other chemo drugs, is they don't discriminate. They don't only kill cancer cells, but kill healthy cells too. And even when they're indiscriminately killing cells, they don't kill all the cancer cells. The MS DS sheet for the drug 
that gives the toxicity to certain chemicals. It states the, su the substance is toxic to the blood. Repeated exposure to a highly toxic material may produce general deterioration of health by the accumulation in one or many human organs. In other words, it's poisonous. So on the other hand, bromelain's toxicity is rated at 1.5 pounds, the same as the fluorophilicine at 7.5 grams. In other words, the bromelain isn't only safer, but it measures safer and is more effective. So why isn't this uh, being used on cancer patients?